All right, we're back. So this is meeting like three or four, Kylie, I think. I, I don't, I, we're getting kind of deep in the weeds, I think number four. And so I'm really excited to uh, be back at it again. We're going to continue on our path about building out this Power Baseball League and leveraging the Power Platform to do just that. And in the last couple, we've talked a bit about our goals and our, our key objectives and what we're trying to accomplish on day one. And um, where we really ended, I think, in the last session was we're, we're getting very close to a point where we need to pick a foundation for where this is all going to live. And so as Kylie and I were chatting through that in our last conversation and a little bit offline after after the recording, we, we realized that um, there's a lot of different moving parts and there, there's different platforms that we could use this. And one of the things that came up in the conversation was an article that we had recently read um, by Nick Dolman, who is one of the, the Microsoft Business Applications MVPs, and also a fellow Canadian for the record. And um, he spoke about how we kind of already have the power platform, uh, or we already have the aspects of CRM that we might need, even though it's not really CRM and you have that in the power platform. And so we wondered and reached out to Nick and wondered if he would be willing to come on and kind of share his perspectives and thoughts on that, because the article, um, which yeah, you likely don't need Dynamic CRM, you need a power app is what it's called. If you haven't read it, you should look it up. It's a great perspective, and and we're really excited that Nick's jumped in here to to share his thoughts and perspectives on this as we go. So welcome, Nick. Glad you're here. Hey, hey thanks, Malcolm. Hey, Kylie. Nice to be here. Yeah, so, so I, I don't know if you want to do a little introduction. I, I know you're... I, I, mentioned your business applications MVP. You've been doing that for quite some time. You've been in, engaged in the space for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, business applications MVP. I've uh, been awarded now for the fourth time as of this past July 1st. Pretty exciting. So they awesome. haven't haven't kicked me out yet. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find out my stuff. Follow me on uh, Twitter at ReadyXRM. And that, it's about 99% of it is purely about Power Platform, Portals, Dynamics 365, all that fun stuff. Or definitely check out my blog as well. And I, I try to do one every couple of weeks. I, uh, I had a goal once of doing it every week, but, you know, sometimes other projects in life gets in the way. So definitely I try to keep that fairly updated. Um, I do a lot on Power Apps Portals, but I also do cover all of the Power Platform um, and stuff that I kind of discovered in my projects or my trainings and things like that. But yeah, I've been working with this since version one back in 2002, back when it was wow. called Microsoft Business Solutions Customer Relationship Management. It wasn't even called Dynamics back then. Yeah, that's a little while ago. And what an evolution we've seen now oh. to be at the place where we are today, right? With the power yeah. platform and all the stuff that comes with it. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's it's really cool to see where it's come along. And it's it's when I was started working, it was very niche. No one knew, no one knew about it. And now it seems to be everywhere, and people are into it. So it's really neat. I saw on LinkedIn. I, I don't know if, or maybe it was Twitter this morning or or yesterday, that in the last. I don't I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact stats, but it was something like in the last month or in the last couple couple of weeks, there was 170 um, job postings that referenced looking for skill set in the Power Platform, Microsoft Power Platform, yeah. which is amazing. That's that's unbelievable that there's that much required and not much need in the in the market right now for this yeah. kind of stuff, which is great. Yeah. So if you're uh, if you're thinking of spending four years of university, just uh, take a boot camp and and make the same money coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. And save a bundle. Yeah. Exactly. So why don't we dive right in? I mean, the the whole concept of this conversation was really around your article um, because yeah. it, it struck us as really appealing because it's really where it, it revolves around where we're at. We've been trying really hard not to uh, pigeonhole, for lack of better words, ourselves into like, okay, we're going to do this in, in dynamic CRM. And your article came up, as I, as I alluded to, in our last conversation because – it, its whole premise was you don't you don't actually maybe need dynamic CRM, but you can use components of it. So yeah. maybe you can speak to that and kind of your your mindset around that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Well, that actually that came from an actual meeting um, with a client, and how that all came about was uh, so I do uh, part of what I do these days is I, um, as opposed to taking on projects myself because a lot with a power platform, a lot of IT departments are. Uh, they already have people that are, you know, business analysts and application developers and things like that. So what I kind of come in and do is uh, do a lot of training and coaching um, and help their teams along to build out applications using the Power Platform. 
So this particular organization, um, a couple people, they have a couple people in IT. That's their job is to, you know, take and build applications. And a lot of their applications are kind of what they call legacy. They were built on SharePoint on premise, uh, you know, visual basic access, all that kind of stuff. And they realize digital transformation. We need to get this in the cloud. We need to start using modern tools and technologies. So, you know, we did uh, we did a power platform boot camp. So we talked all about uh, Canvas apps, uh, Power Automate, model driven apps. We talked a bit about portals. We we touched on other areas like uh, AI builder and um, uh, virtual agents and all that, you know, again, kind of talk about stuff they might not touch now, but might look at in the future, just to kind of help them along to build out these, you know, build out their power apps. So they had a couple definite quick use cases. There's a couple applications they know they need to build. Um, so they're going to have a, you know, ultimately, and I actually saw, oh, kind of met with them last week and they've built out a Canvas app for their phones. And then for the administration, for internal staff, there's a model-driven app that's looking at that data and beginning to manipulate it. And probably that's going to lead into some reporting and all that other fun stuff. So they're excited because they were able to use these tools to rapidly build uh, their business applications on top of the Power Platform. So here's where the conversation got really interesting. Um, so they have, you know, and it's a, it's a nonprofit, so... Anybody that's worked in nonprofit knows that a lot of these decisions are always decided by committees, right? <laughs> There's not some owner of the company that's saying, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that. It's all about committees, it's collaboration, um, and it's a different kind of model to work in. And I know, Mal Malcolm, you've worked for nonprofits in your past, so you know all yeah. about, you know yeah. how about that, <laughs> you know, yeah. and some of the challenges. And it was interesting, one of the project managers was on, you know, in that meeting, and she said, oh, well, the, all this power platform stuff sounds great. What you guys are building looks awesome. But just curious, like, you know, you talked a little bit about the integration. She said, uh, will this integrate into like a CRM system like Salesforce? And I'm kind of like, um, yeah, it, it, it can. But, well, you know, why are you asking that question? She goes, oh, well, I'm on a different committee and we've been looking at uh, CRM systems. And we know Microsoft had one once and we're looking at Salesforce and a few others. We just want to make sure that. The work that's being done now, it's going to integrate with that because there's stakeholders and stuff like that. So I kind of laughed. I said, well, you realize the power platform itself, part of that evolution, it came from dynamic CRM. Model-driven apps is dynamic CRM. The common data service, as much as you know, people look at the common data service as being this new thing, the common data service is, in reality, 17 years old. It comes from CRM version one. There was a business application layer, uh, version three came out where you can begin to create entities and it already had that standard. It had a common data model of sorts. It wasn't called that back then. So all of this technology came in. So I said, well, you know what? Like based on the licensing, you're already gonna get for power for the power platform. Um, and you're not, you know, are you not doing opportunity tracking? You're not doing customer cases and things like that. So I started like, are you, you don't take tickets or anything like that? Like, no, they actually take, they get funding. They work on multiple projects. They have to report on these projects, uh, you know, as sort of government funded organizations do. And so they were like, well, no, but we kind of need a, you know, we need a central location of all our stakeholders. I said, well, accounts and contacts, which as part of the common data model, and it's part of Power Apps, you can build effectively a CRM system. So you're already licensed for it. The platform's already there. You could be up and running in a matter of weeks without having to go through a whole big long procurement process and go through like a proper CRM implementation. And like, yes, you have to plan for it and everything. But that's really how that conversation, that blog order came to be, because it made me realize that a lot of people are jumping into the Power Platform and they don't realize because Dynamic CRM was renamed to Dynamics 365 back in like 2016. And for the right reasons, because it was a con, you know consolidation of other products like finance and operations and things like that and groupings. And it's not just CRM anymore. It's more than that. It's, you know, it's kind of it's going back to the XRM days, that anything relationship management. And that's how I've been using CRM for years. Right. I mean, I can count probably on one hand how many pure sales and service implementations I've done. Very few. Um, I've done some for sure, but most of it's always been, you know, building, you know, like member management systems, donation management systems, like certification systems, grant management systems, all these things on top of, 
the CRM layer. And now um, there's some clients that I said, you no longer need your Dynamics 365 licenses. You can get away with just having power power platform licenses or power app per user or power app per app licenses. So that's that's how that evolution that came to be. And it really comes back down to what is your business requirements? What is it? What is it that you're trying to build now? I mean, you guys are, you know, following along, building this association, um, you know, this uh, baseball league association kind of thing. And then, you know, in in the real sense, you know, you're probably evaluating like what pieces, what are our requirements? And from my understanding, you haven't really, you know, determined a platform, obviously, you know, because we are working the power platform. That's obviously the direction you're going, but it always comes down to that's that critical stage of how businesses decide what software platform to use. And in my experience, I've always seen it's always been three things. It's we're either going to buy something um, or we're going to build it. And then the third option, which is always the option that goes 90 percent of the time, is we're going to use something like Excel for access to manage all of this data and so and there's definitely pros and cons to each of that like um so going to the now the excel side we all know the dangers with that and i can tell you horror stories of Mm. you know spreadsheets that got overwritten people that didn't know wrote all these macros and then the macro broke and they didn't know what to do and all this other stuff um and then there's the building well of course you build something from the ground up, you hire a developer and yeah, they build it. It's great. But then two years later, it's out of date, you know, yeah. and where's the developer who did it? Like they've disappeared off into the woods somewhere yeah. and you're left with this legacy system. And of course they had to spend all this time building the database layer, building the security, building the login, building the reporting engine. This is something the power platform provides, you know, I would say out of the box, all of these pieces. Right. So finally we get to this buy stage And here I think there's a challenge and I think it's up to us in the community to help kind of relay this message is because we're buying the power, we're buying a platform, we're not necessarily buying an end system. So for you guys with your your baseball league manager, your baseball league management system, probably what would happen in the real world, you would do a Google search or a Bing search, whatever baseball league management system and they're probably out there there probably are some systems they're probably some are cloud-based some are probably you know server-based whatever Mm -hmm. they probably exist and you know what in some cases it might be a perfect fit but probably that there's going to be some gaps there it's going to like it's maybe great at league management great at member management but it's not so good at you know managing the scores or the seasons and it might not quite fit right so you start making little workarounds now sometimes it might be somewhat customizable or maybe there's a certain report you need out of it and and a lot of businesses or a lot of organizations they'll do with that um but whereas you get something like the power platform extremely flexible we can really begin to configure it and what makes it easy for some people Um, So for some organizations, they say, well, let's buy a CRM system. Um, Now, of all the CRM projects I've ever been in, I've been in a few where they said, we just want what's out of the box. We don't want it customized. We don't want it configured. Just give us out of the box. I'm kind of like, okay, here it is. Three days later, (laughs) they call you again. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. You know what? It would be great if we could have this. I'm like, sure, I can do that. And then it, you know, kind of explodes for there. But I could also see their point because, let's say, you know, we're technologists of sorts. We know this stuff inside and out. We know what's doable. But you got to realize, and and, and it's not a derogatory term, but I call these the people out there that are working in these businesses and these organizations like the muggles of the world, right? (laughs) They don't know all the wizardry behind what's going on. So if you're like the director of, let's say, a nonprofit, and if you go into your board of directors and say, you know what, we need to have a new system to help manage our stakeholders. If you go in and say, well, we're going to buy, we're going to get licenses to this power platform and we're going to build this stuff. The board of directors is going to be like, no, you're not. Don't do that. We're not IT. We're whatever we do. Go out and buy something. So there's that gravitation towards getting like a CRM system. And of course, whether it's Salesforce or Dynamics, but with that, you're at the end of the day, you're still you're still going to create your entities and your fields and forms and stuff. 
So I think probably part of, I think what um, like we need to do in the community is kind of take that stick, that build stigma away to realize, hey, a lot of these pieces are already there and it's not like you're going to need a developer. This is stuff that right. someone with a little technical know-how should be able to adapt quickly and build out. And yeah, you might need to bring in a developer for sure for those edge cases or that last 10%, but that's much better than getting a developer in to build out that whole thing. And then not only that, you can have all of your, your everything that you, how you want it to work the way you want it. Um, so for myself, I'm a one man, I'm a one man business essentially, but I use, I use the power platform. I manage my projects. I do my time entry. I have flows set up that kind of summarize all the work I've done. I have that emailed out to my clients and that kind of stuff. And if there's something I don't like on that email or the format, well, I'll just go in and change it. And right. I go through a bit of a process. I do it on a dev system and move it through. And like, I'm kind of trying to eat my own dog food the most I can. Right. But it's not like it's super technical to do that. Like, yes, I'm a technical person, but anybody running a business for the amount, the same time they might spend building a complex spreadsheet, they could build some of these, these apps on the power platform. And then there might be cases where yes, they do need a CRM. So yes, they are managing opportunities or they are managing cases. Well, again, that whole idea there is, you know what, don't reinvent the wheel, use what's already there. And then it makes, then there's that cost, you know, I've got to do a cost benefit analysis. Is it worth, you know, licensing customer service or something in a lot of case for large organizations? Definitely. It, makes more sense to use what's there because it's following best practices. Or the other cool thing that Microsoft is doing is they're providing a bunch of accelerators where right. you get almost a template and they have like five or six already. And I believe that um, I think media management, which could have include sports management is, was there too. So if you, as you're building your, you know, your league management system, it's not to say you have to use exactly it as it is out of the box, but you could take a look at it and begin to cherry pick some of those pieces that work. So that's going to save you time building that out. Yeah. So, yeah, that's know. a good call. I never thought of that. That I've heard of those accelerators. I know you talked about the nonprofit. They have there's a big nonprofit accelerator that's been worked on for the last few years. But um, yeah. it's funny that you talked about the the three different you know types, and it's almost as though the power platform is like a hybrid of all three. Because when you say build, I think of like you said, build from scratch, from the ground yeah. up. We're talking about somebody coming in and building out code to tell some application and some framework to do something. Yeah. Whereas the Power Platform already has that stuff. And you still might need, like you said, I mean, you framed it perfectly. You still might need a developer here and there. But by and large, this this whole notion of the citizen developer, this is exactly who they're catering to. You know, yeah. Come and do this stuff on your own. Yeah, exactly. And, like, and, those, and for me, like you could build like with a common data model that has all these predefined entities, well, you can actually take those, you could like as part of the blog article that you you you, you found there, I actually go step by step and we mm-hmm. build a CRM system and it's um, it will take you 10 minutes um, to build right. something that looks very, very eerily familiar to dynamic CRM. And it's just to prove the point that those pieces are there to manage for that stuff. And of course, your security model is already there. Your mm-hmm. backups are happening automatically. Your user interface is already there. You, yeah, add fields and forms and rearrange that a little bit. But you know, you have other functions like export to Excel if you want to do that. Um, you could actually, you know, install the Outlook app and have it in Outlook, or you can use the mobile app and have it there. Like, it, it's all of these pieces that developers would spend weeks on. It's just kind of as part of the package. So. Uh, I've heard of the other analogy. It's like a Lego kit. So if you're building something from the ground up, you buy that, you know, the 500 piece, you know, generic kit. Well, yeah, you can build a bunch of cool stuff that'll take you out. Or you can get the spaceship that's already, you know, you follow the instruction that's pre-built, but then you can begin to modify it how you want it right. for a lot less time. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a great call out how we can keep adding on to it. Because just because we say we're not traditional CRM now, doesn't mean we can't add on that license later and add on those entities later. And I think something that we're trying to pay attention to a lot in our project is, okay, let's break this down into, you know, manageable chunks. Because the first time when Malcolm got going, we had a whole long list of all this stuff. And all of a sudden we had donor management in the mix too. And that's just 
going to be way too much for us to handle for when we are just trying to get something that works to help people who are just managing their data through through imaginary people who are managing their data through a spreadsheet right now, right? So it's like, what can we do to give them a little bit and get them started? And then we'll kind of keep building on from there. Yeah, one of my long-term clients um, that I've had for you, like, and this is the great thing about this industry as well, a, a project like this is never truly done. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I went into an organization, they had 20 different access systems, databases, and slowly one by one, we started taking them offline, redoing them at that time, dynamic CRM, but now it'd be the power platform. And slowly those legacy systems kind of got retired and that data got brought into, you know, you know, what we now call the common data service. And so, wow, you update a phone number for this contact where you don't have to do it 20 more times across all these access databases. Yet that functionality from that access database, one was, you know, some sort of like reporting for some of these government uh, agencies. Another one was kind of tracking a certification process or a membership process. Well, now it's all tied in to that common, the common data service, that common data. And everybody's everybody's more collaborative because those tools are there. And then you have a much better picture of your organization of how your stakeholders are, how they're involved in different aspects of your business. Um, and then on top of that too, these are old, these are old access databases. The upgrade is there because if you're in the cloud, well, the upgrade happens every six months, whether you want it to or not, you're going to get new features, new functionality. And for the most part, yeah, there's a few things that break along the way, but nowhere near, the the change upheaval of change for upgrade projects i believe all three of us have been in upgrade projects right yep. and you know the the anxiety amongst the end users amongst you know the muggles again sorry but you know <laughs> about an upgrade and the training and this you know and you know well the old you know the old way we could do it this way but all these small gradual changes then you know three or four years go by and they don't realize wow we're we're on still up to the date software and we haven't had to live through that that nightmare of an upgrade project because all these pieces kept, right. you know, incrementing. Well, and the, yeah. I think Microsoft does a great job at I mean, continuing to innovate. I mean, it's it's they've done a phenomenal job over the last yeah. five years, right, of doing this and and in continuing. And so you're at the forefront of that innovation, and they do a really good job at listening. I know a lot of people have been like, ah, they don't really listen to the customer. I would argue that they do a pretty good job of listening to what the needs are in the in 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 the sector as a whole and yeah. innovating while still allowing you to your point to build on and add on elements that you need. And I mean, I think it's every Friday for as many as we can remember, there's an announcement of a couple new connectors that you can yeah. you can tap into, right? Like they just yeah. they continue to just push and all of a sudden that opens more and more doors to what you can do with that solution down the road, which I think is really important. So. Yeah. No, and it's and it's cool. And like I said, like you know, like and yeah, the new connectors. Like, ooh, we we get yeah, we could connect to Mailchimp for quite a while, but like, oh, well, here's like here's another thing. So we're beginning to expand beyond the power, like the power platform um, project I worked on. We kind of went around. I uh, did a bit of a, an IT inventory, and and I think probably a lot of organizations probably you don't realize. And I wouldn't want to call it shadow IT, but a lot of organizations are using a lot of cloud-based software that other parts of the organization probably aren't aware of. So, for instance, this particular organization, their marketing group was using MailChimp. And there's another group using some other cloud service. And they didn't realize that they're using these other or other parts of the organization didn't realize they're using these different cloud services. So that's, I think, but the thing the takeaway was there was you know, oh, wouldn't be it would be great if we could organize like our get our Mailchimp talking to our stakeholder system, which is sitting on the Power Platform. Well, there's a connector now; we can make that happen. Like, you know, I realize it's not perfect, but there's some things we could do there. Where five years ago, that would have been a big integration project that would have been completely out of reach for this particular organization, and now it's like, oh yeah, give me a couple hours, I'll wire it up, and it's kind of you know, you got the basics there. Yeah. Um, so. Well, and that fits well into what we're endeavoring to do, Kylie, is just like you talked about it, this start with what we want from day one. And and again, we are using a fictitious example, but it is kind of rooted in in real life because I, uh, I've i alluded to this on previous calls. I, I do a lot of work with our hockey association here. So different sport, but same concept. 
And I'm every year I'm mystified this year included at at how much they don't communicate and how much they don't reach out and how much they're ne they don't have the right information on file. And I and I continuously each year scratch my head and think well, I, I don't understand how they don't have a system in place that could do all of this. Well, how, how many times have we been on a call and given the same information three or four times yeah. on that same call? We get transferred yeah. to someone else. Yeah. And like, exactly. oh, do you guys like, you know, it's the ones that are really good at it that say, oh, I, I'll pull up your file here or such and such has passed me over your file. It's like, oh, that's that's awesome. And then I'll, I might even ask, what system are you guys using? And right. you find always out tempted to ask. <laughs> you know, some, they might be using Omnichannel or something, right? Which is like, oh, this is cool. This is the Dynamics 365, and this is, you know, this is how it works. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, and you're and you're right. Like there is, I've worked, uh, you know, um, so people might know me as well. Like I. I've been involved in powerlifting for the last few years as a strength sport and small organization, but you know, some of the systems involved and it's sort of like, man, like if I had the time, I could reorganize a lot of their management systems in terms of like meat registrations, records management, um, even like how the meets run on a day to day, but like, you know, the whole protocol for, you know, equipment checks and everything like that. It's just sort of like, wow, there's such a fertile ground to build something on the power platform with this it's just yeah. you know fight you know fight the time with everything else so there's it's almost anything you can imagine you could use the power platform to manage in some respect yeah yeah i definitely well, feel like we have such high standards since we work in this in this yeah. atmosphere then every time we experience bad customer service or systems not talking to each other we're like this is what we do <laughs> it's, <laughs> exactly let me fix it. yeah <laughs> Well, and for what we're trying to do here, I mean, I think this whole conversation has just solidified that we don't, you know, I don't think we've talked about anything that requires what what used to be known as CRM. We're not doing sales. We're not doing yeah. in kind of inventory management, anything like that. I mean, we've dabbled in ideas of around that, that that initial brain dump got pretty, pretty lengthy, pretty quick. But but for that day one release, like, what are we trying to do? We'll help an organization solidify its context, get out of years upon years of Excel spreadsheets so that it's consolidated into one, give them some communications tools that they can leverage and, and use right out of the same system and as opposed to diving around and pulling lists and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and and then simplify simplify the the structure of the data because right now it's all over the map. Uh, again, fake example, but I've, I've filled out a registration form every year. It's It's amazing to me that they're collecting all this information when they already have all of this information. Yeah. So, you know, that's, and, and, those are the goals. And on paper to boot too yet, right? Yeah, some cases. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. In a lot of cases. And so I, I think the, I think the other important thing that I kind of took from this conversation too is just because we're saying we're not doing CRM doesn't mean we're not using accounts and contacts, right? Because we're still talking about players and they still fit into a family. So it might make sense to use some of those out of the box entities that are a part of CDS and use them as a part of the power platform, maybe in a Canvas app, maybe in a model driven app. But just or both. because we're doing, or both, yeah, probably both. Just because we're doing that doesn't mean we're having to do do CRM or having to kind of take advantage of opportunities. We can still use contacts just um, on the power platform, I guess. I think that yep. is an interesting line for me. Yeah. yeah, and that's always something for years we always want, like we ask for about having an, uh, a CRM system. You know, could we license a CRM system without the sales and service module? Right. And Microsoft was very resistant of that resistant of that for years but then now we have it and we see the benefits we i think a lot of us knew the benefits that that was the case and and we're here well and organizationally the benefits you talked about a lot of the this was a nonprofit organization i've worked in nonprofits this example is a is a sports association that if they're nonprofit but if they do turn a profit it's not much of one the 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 appeal to use the power platform licensing structure versus the what you what the the bigger application if you will would be is is a huge bonus to that that organization yeah. because there's not a lot of money that they're going to spend and i think a lot of organizations cringe at that i'm like actually i can i can say my own experience right off right out of the gate when i worked for an organization before we were a nonprofit organization we were toying around with what do we need we need a new crm what are we going to use and the person coordinating the project at the time said 
well, we've got Microsoft on tap. They're going to show us their Dynamics um, CRM platform. And I laughed on the call and said, There's, we, can't, we can't afford that. Right, not right. not with with what we have to work with, and it ended up that we we were we were very pleasantly surprised. But that's even better today than it was back then. Like the license structure is yeah, and this is and this is the and that and I I, it, I I've gotten into arguments with some people about the licensing, and depending on how you're looking at it, we come from a CRM background where the licenses are per seat over like in terms of subscription. Like I think for the full plan, like what is it, 140 something retail. Um, which you know is probably a million dollars Canadian per user per month kind of thing, um, and yeah, that's pricing. But then it's it's you got to look at it as a business expense of part of yep. equipment. Then there's people coming from the Office 365 side of it, where you're spending like a couple bucks per user per month for email and that, and then they see something. So where we're landing with the power platform, talking retail pricing. $40 per user per month and that gives you access to all the apps or you can do per app, which is like $10 that gives you access to two apps. So, you know, for some people like, Ooh, $40 a month. Well, let's look, look at a different, different uh, perspective. And this is the analogy I always like to use. And Chris Huntingford likes, loves it when I say this is for an average company, if you have a, if you're supplying coffee for your company, for your employees and like pretty much everywhere I've worked, there's always coffee in the kitchen or there's those pots or there's pop in the fridge. And how much does that cost on average per employee per day? Probably like a, a buck or two per day, right? Yep. Well, that turns out to like $30, $40 per month. And that's for pop and coffee. So on one hand, you're okay to buy pop and coffee for your employees, but to spend the exact same amount of money to give them a productivity app, which will make them much more efficient, which will make your business more profitable, either by sav saving time or saving money. So you know, nonprofits, I know you're not out to make money, but you're always looking for efficiencies, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's where I find like people that kind of grumble about the pricing for power apps, you know, and that realm i think it's quite reasonable i know there's a few other areas that are like in licensing within the power platform that i find are a little bit out of reach uh things like ai builder i find portals licensing is is not exactly aligned right but i'm hoping that gets better over time um but for the most part it is something that's within the realm of you're going to spend less money than building something from scratch and you're going to save more time than using like excel yeah, and even you look at things like the, what Power Automate has with respect to uh, approvals, and if you if you can articulate the time saving in having something like that versus the the emails back and forth or the the hallway conversations that don't get tracked and it's like oh yeah I approve that on oh I don't know we talked about it someday in the hall and you right, said yeah. yes do it right and now we can have all that tracked and it's through a, a mechanism that's consistent and predict predictable and it's always the same that there's a huge value in that that needs to go and i don't know that everybody knows how to calculate the roi of that kind of stuff but it's yeah. it's absolutely something people should think about right and i think anybody that's working like whether you're a consultant or whatever i think that's sort of an important step is and that's also help you just determine how you're going to build the app as well and that's another a factor I, you know maybe we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves but sometimes i always ask the question of like in terms of volume of data, they say, well, you need to import this data from this system. And I'm like, well, how many records are there? Well, there's like 25 records. I've said, you know what? You're better off to hire a student to key, re key that in than to pay me right. to import that data. I mean, that's, you know, one example, but it's also building things where, you know, and you go in these requirements meetings and they want a flow to do this and that and basically make toast and jam for them in the morning and prepare their coffee. And sometimes you got to you got to scale back. Say, is it really worth it? Like, why do you need this? Why do you need this automation? Um, and I've been in I've been in very interesting conversations where, um, you know, we were just, you know, to try to save somebody's somebody save someone some time. We're like, well, this is going to be a one hundred thousand dollar customization. Is it really worth it to save, you know, so many amount of time? Right. So there's yes, the power platform can do so much, but also, you know, focus your energies on the things that are going to provide your biggest bang for your buck as well. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with keying in data. Sometimes there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with doing a few manual steps. Yeah, it might take a little. Yes, you could automate it, but 
should you um and then sometimes it's it's a comfort level too it's important to have that human eyeball on things as well so yeah like you talked about approvals where you could make a whole system and you can build some ai that if these conditions are met and this conditions are met it's going to automatically approve this opportunity or something like that well if that's all completely automated and you have these little edge cases and all of a sudden you just realize oh well the compute you know it this automatically happened and it's going to cost us a lot of money because it shouldn't have that's where sometimes having a few the human touch is important as part of this as well yeah yeah and i think that'll be especially especially important in this project because we're talking about kids and so there's there's only so much you can automate because safety yeah. has to be your primary primary focus right which i think in day one that's not really going to come into play as much but when we start looking at things later um, and yeah. i think as you talk about people who are any of our applications and you're taking something from handwriting and somehow magically getting it into a system there also needs to be some kind of double check there for mistakes or corrections and and that goes back to about the you know do you need do you, you might not need a dynamic crm but you need a power app even if you're in that traditional sales company, but if you're like a small shop, like maybe a couple people, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think of the the sales and service implementations I've done, and Kylie, you might be able to agree with me on this. What's the first thing you do to that opportunity form? Well, you strip out sometimes half of the functionality. Nobody needs any of that. <laughs> or hide it, right? And you kind of begin to boil it down. So then you got to realize it. What's the best approach? And this is something else you got. Every project's completely different. Is do you do that top down approach where you have that full system and you begin to hide functionality, or do you go from the bottom up and you start to add functionality? And that's kind of a tricky balance too, right? So. Even if you are managing sales or service, do you need to use that opportunity, the quotes, orders, invoices, or the product catalog, or can you just create a new entity and call it deal or, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and Microsoft is actually very, people will say, well, Microsoft doesn't like that. Well, that's not true. They're very, um, they're actually very open to that. So there's another MVP you guys know, uh, Steve Mordew, mm -hmm. and that's what his business does. He has built a, you know, a sales management and a service management system sitting on top of the power platform that's not full on Dynamics 365. Microsoft looks at, at it as, as a stepping stone to get there, realizing that sometimes their system isn't for everybody, but let's right. at least get them on that platform that they can grow into it. And it doesn't exist today, but it is coming. It is a roadmap that eventually you will be able to have your vanilla CDS and install Dynamics 365 on top of that. Um, and that will probably happen. I have no idea when it's going to happen. I just know it will happen someday. Yeah. And um, where you, you realize, you know what? We do need some functionality. We have all these other things built. Let's 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 add on those Dynamics 365 features. And away okay. you go. Yeah, and That's I think cool. the counterpoint to all of that from the other side, and I think Opportunity is probably a good example, is if there is out-of-the-box features you know you need to use, right? So it's a lot of the times, I, I guess activities is a better example with the regarding that can be linked to everything. And I can't just create a regarding field wherever I want. So that's when I want to say, okay, I need activities. So I want to use the activity entity, things like that. But I think in most cases, you're right, we're going to strip everything down and we don't need, we don't need any of that extra stuff. So, so why don't we just start from scratch? And if we need to change later, we can. Um, well and if you take out the what we're trying to uh, like the organization piece and you know what's the purpose of this whole endeavor for you and I Kylie is to is to continue to push and learn some of these new technologies and that's been my biggest struggle I talked about this a couple weeks ago in one of our first calls is just keeping abreast of all the changes and all the new features and functions and it's so easy to get bogged down in your normal day to day and then be exhausted by evening time this was a this whole premise here is a way to open a door to try something for a fun little side project to dive into something new. So I, I kind of want to make sure that we're not leaning on stuff we already know. We should be trying some of this new stuff. Yeah, and that's that's a good point too. And I think what you're doing is what a lot of people, like I've heard that too. It's like, oh, I'm busy. There's, you know, I don't have the time of the day to learn. I know other Dynamics 365 consultants that, you know, you, you they're right away, they're creating classic workflows. They're you know, doing this other stuff. And I'm like, well, why aren't you using flow? Oh yeah, I don't have time to learn it, whatever. Well, 
you know what, there's an invest, you know, you need to invest. And then sometimes having a side project where something like, you know, um, use the power platform, get the community edition and build a system to track your comic books or something like that. Right. Like yeah. just something to get your fingers. That's the best way to learn. Like, yeah, you can read and watch all the videos in the world or whatever, but I find I need a project to, to learn some of this stuff. Um, like I, I had a, a need that I needed to talk to another time sheeting system of this project I was working on with another contractor and he wanted his stuff in his, his time sheeting system. It had an API, but it didn't have a connector. So that's how I learned how to build custom connectors. Oh, wow. And it was a lot easier because I had a, I had a goal in mind. And yep. so that's how I learned how to piece it all together. Um, and then that, that was a new piece of technology I learned how to use. So, you know, from a learning perspective, that's how I like to learn is give me a, give me a project and I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, I think this is probably a great stopping point. I think this has been a great discussion. I know, Nick, we talked to you probably much longer than we thought we would, but I think this is a very valuable discussion and it'll be really helpful as we move into figuring out what this design is going to look like and as we start Mm -hmm. building things. So, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see your progression as it as it all comes together. Sounds yeah, really cool. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep you posted. Maybe we'll have you back for a, a postmortem, and you can critique and show <laughs> us all the things that we should have done. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> or the we'll technologies that exist that we don't even know about today, because there'll be new <laughs> stuff by the time we're done. But exactly. yeah, this has been really helpful. I really, we really appreciate your time, Nick, and taking time out of your day. And this is an after hours call, so uh, we really, really appreciate you. You know holding off dinner and, and waiting so that we could navigate through this conversation. Yeah. Speaking of dinner, I've got to get on that pretty soon. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah awesome. and well, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, oh, go ahead, thanks. guys. Sorry. I was just going to say thanks, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next time.